Which game is harder, Triangle Strategy Hard Mode or Fire Emblem Three Houses Maddening? In this video, I'm going to go over the differences between the two games, uh, how they handle difficulty, and how their mechanics either make them easier or harder than the other game. So to begin, we'll start with Triangle Strategy Hard Mode. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know much about Hard Mode. Um, now that seems kind of stupid because people are making they're making like tutorials like, oh yeah, this is how you beat Hard Mode. People understand how to beat hard mode and how to play it and all these other things, but if you Google what are the differences between the difficulties of the game, every single like games journalist uh, website just basically says that hard mode is harder uh, without specific details. The wiki doesn't say it. You can't. This information is not readily accessible. So we can just assume that hard mode is the hardest setting, and that whatever it does. Either enemies deal more damage or take less damage. Uh, maybe they have more health. Um, as far as I can tell, I don't think it adds more enemies to the game necessarily. So we can kind of safely assume that it doesn't add more enemies, but maybe the AI is better. Uh, these are these are just things that, like at, at this point in time, with the recording of this video, are like assumptions we can make about the game. So it, pro it probably we can assume it makes the game harder in some way, uh, but. Uh, this this will be kind of hard to determine, but as, in, as far as like which one is harder, uh, maybe it won't be because I think if I just explain like what maddening is, then you know we can kind of come to a conclusion like which game gets a point in, in difficulty, which one's harder in this category. Okay, so we do know what maddening mode does. It adds more enemy spawns. It makes enemies over leveled so that they uh, have way better stats than you. And they just they essentially deal way more damage, take way less damage, have have higher dodge rates, and there's more of them. Uh, so oh yeah, and they also gain new abilities, and you have half XP rate. Uh, in Fire Emblem games, you have finite XP, uh, unless it's like something like uh, Sacred Stones, which does not. Uh, but essentially, you can only do so many, even like for extra battles, you can only do so many extra battles throughout a playthrough. Like, there's a finite amount of missions and a finite amount of extra battles you can do before you can no longer do extra battles. Uh, so, so basically, you can do so many things per month, and you run out of, like, you know, points to use to do extra battles. So, in Fire Emblem, you have a finite amount of battles. In this game, you do not. Uh, but also, more importantly, for the difficulty settings, uh, there's more enemies, you know they're harder... And they're, they're like, really overleveled. Like, if you take, in the beginning of, of a Maddening playthrough, if you take a unit, and you have it fight a single enemy unit, it will lose. In, in like, 80 to 90% of circumstances, that unit will not be able to kill the enemy, and the enemy will be able to kill you. In this game, um, you can easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with enemies in, in most situations. So, I, w I would say, in general... For this category, for just raw difficulty, like what the difficulty does in the game, maddening right out of the gate is much harder. Because this game doesn't seem to add more enemy spawns, the enemies don't seem to be like insanely powerful, and I'm basing this off of uh, this playthrough. My units are almost all level 10, so we're getting there. Slowly, but we are getting there. <laughs> so I'm not like near the, the end game point, but I know that maddening starts off hard and, and stays hard unless you know how to min-max, so we'll just waste this, I guess, whatever, get some XP. Uh, okay, so the, for raw difficulty, I would say it, have to, it has to go to Fire Emblem. Uh, next, let's talk about combat and death. So in, in Fire Emblem, your entire army moves per turn. So this is also true of the enemy. So the entire enemy army moves per turn. So if you were to lose a unit, or if a unit were to die, it would be more likely to happen in three houses because if there are five enemies and you move a single unit near those five enemies every single enemy will attack that unit to kill it uh, what is this? surmount okay i don't really know what that does i just unlocked it but in this game in triangle strategy units alternate so you have like a, like a queue as to who goes so i can go through the queue so you can see the turn order so this game, things move one at a time, so it's it's less likely that a unit dies from combat because the enemies can't just gang up on them. So even though I'm next to two enemies and this guy's next to, like, three of my dudes, um, we can kind of gang up on him by using 
the uh, follow-up attack mechanic, like you can see here. Uh, but you have to set those up, and it's not nearly as lethal as just being next to two to three enemies in maddening mode, which will kill a unit unless they're extremely tanky, and that's a very that's like a rare exception. That like that's an exception to the rule, not the rule. I guess he can use this on himself. Uh, so that's that's definitely a big thing against this game for difficulty. Oh, these dudes are gonna waste these turns. <laughs> I just need to kill this guy of like 50 turns. Shit. <laughs> And passing doesn't count. <laughs> or, like, it does count. That's not good. We should be able to kill him, I think, though. We'll see. Alright, here we go. Alright. Smack him. Okay, so for ter for just, just for, like, mechanically, I would say Fire Emblem's more difficult because of the way the enemy phase is and player phase. And this game, especially if you outnumber the enemies, um, like, you just keep taking all these turns and they never get a turn. But obviously, every one of my units would be able to move in Fire Emblem, so it's kind of like a toss-up. Alright, let's see if we can... We should be able to kill him. Cool. Alright, so you have an entire army moving, uh, high enemy lethality versus alternating turns, and enemies uh, not being extremely lethal and it being more, like, slow-paced. So I would say for difficulty, it goes to Fire Emblem again. And I don't have a Fire Emblem bias either, like, I play a bunch of different games, I play a lot of shooting games as well, so, like, this is, like, I also like Triangle Strategy, like, I don't hate this game or something. Um, I'm just trying to be as objective as I can. So, in terms of, like, raw battle mechanics, it goes to Fire Emblem, because it's way easier to lose units. And also, in Fire Emblem, there's permadeath, so in this game, if you lose a unit, like, I didn't care at all that I lost, like, a unit or two in that fight... Uh, because they don't, there's no permadeath at all, so you do not need to be careful. You can sacrifice units to win, and you can literally lose like every single one of your units except for one. And as long as th there isn't like some like win or lose condition of you can't lose certain units, and you lose that unit and lose, you can sacrifice everyone except for one unit and still win, including your main guy. So in Fire Emblem, these here are losing conditions by default in every match. You cannot lose your lord who is like the the NPC that you can, like you can run them, but they're not your player character. You have like a lord that you can't have die, and then you have your player that you can't have die. And there's extra conditions. In this game, your average battle is just like defeat the enemy, and it doesn't matter if anyone dies. So in Fire Emblem, you can never have your lord die, even if you're not on, on the classic mode, which is uh, turning permadeath off. But, you know, most people play in classic, so it's assumed you would be for difficulty. Um, your lord can't die and your main unit can't die. And then there's also other conditions, like you have to win within 25 turns, or you have to uh, capture some objective, or you have to prevent some ally NPC who's like borderline suicidal rushing into enemies who will easily kill them from dying. So like Fire Emblem, I think it's another point for difficulty. It, like Three Houses Maddening in this case, because by default your lord and your main character cannot die in any battle under any circumstances. So even though they're good units, like lords and, and your main character are good units, you have to be very careful with them because if they do die, you will lose. So that's definitely a point in Fire Emblem's favor. Uh, we also have the way that um, combat works in this game as far as like grinding. So in Fire Emblem, you have finite resources you have like finite XP you can gain, you have finite battles you can do, and then you run out. In this game, you can infinitely mock battle for resources and for experience. So right there, I was just doing a mock battle. And the reason I did that uh, was on purpose for this video to kind of show that you can just grind that out to get XP and items and then upgrade all your stuff. Um, so that's definitely a point against this game. Like Fire Emblem is definitely the harder game in that way. Um, for economy... Uh, this game's economy, you can just grind you can just grind these out infinitely for money and resources. In Fire Emblem, you have a finite amount of money. Uh, in Three Houses, it's not as bad as some of the other games, but you also have weapon durability. Uh, so if you want to either upgrade weapons or fix weapons, that costs you metal to, to fix and upgrade, and it costs you money. And in a lot of cases, it co it's very expensive to upgrade. So like, let's say you have like some cool endgame weapon and you want to upgrade it, it's very expensive to do that. And you also have to keep in mind that special attacks consume more 
weapon durability, so they break faster. So if you want to use like a bonus, like a big bonus damage attack, uh, called you know they're called combat arts, you have to consume more resources to do that, and it hurts your economy. So this game's economy doesn't seem to be very much of like a difficulty factor. So in terms of that, like that goes to Fire Emblem again, like even like even any Fire Emblem, because all Fire Emblems have like weapon durability and they have permadeath. And I would say it's much harder to beat levels on Fire Emblem Maddening than it is in this game. Uh, so far, I only lost two missions, and that's because I had no idea what I was doing for the first one. It was just kind of just moving dudes wherever, and I didn't know that follow-up attacks were a thing. And then the second one I lost, uh, my dudes were just getting shot by archers in like some uh, mine. And then I just realized I can just be a little bit more passive and just let them come to me, and then it was easy. So this game doesn't punish you as much as Fire Emblem. Uh, there are some pop-up spawns in this game, but they're not as bad. Like the ambush spawns in Maddening Mode, this is also another mechanic of Maddening Mode, a attack the same turn they spawn. So if you if you put a unit... so And keep in mind, this game has permadeath, and if your lord dies, you lose. So if your lord triggers an ambush spawn, and, and then... Um, or the ambush spawn just happens to appear on a certain turn, they attack that same turn. So if, if, you, if you move and then end, and then wait, that the waiting is what triggers ambush spawn. So once your unit has committed to a position, an ambush spawn will trigger. And if that unit is a lord or your, your main unit, and that ambush spawn is within range, they will attack and kill your lord and you will lose. So Fire Emblem Maddening is way more punishing than this game, where my, my lord can just die, and it doesn't even matter at all. Um, one thing I do want to see from this game is, like, better difficulty settings and, like, more transparency as to what the difficulty does, because if you Google it right now, you just get nothing, but it just says, oh, if you're a veteran of tactical games, you'll like this. And it's like, okay, but well, what does it actually do? I, like, you look at the enemy levels, they're the same level as you. You look at the enemy damage, they're similar damage to you. You look at the enemy, like, number of units, it's similar to you. Uh, there's, like, very high hit rates as well. Like, things don't seem to miss often uh, for you or the enemy, unless it's, like, a status debuff, like, blind or something. Um, you also, the also, another huge thing that works against this game, is aside from the infinite resources you can ob obtain from grinding, is when you lose a mission, like when you just completely wipe, you get to keep all the XP and levels you gained. So you don't get stat decreases, you keep all of your XP, uh, you keep all of the earned abilities uh, that you acquired from level ups during that mission, and then you can then you can keep brute forcing it to win. In Fire Emblem, when you lose, you just restart from, you know, let, let's say you're level 10 when you enter a fight, and you're at 0% XP, and your stats or whatever, if you get to level 20 in that fight, which is unlikely in Fire Emblem, but if, let's say, you get to level 20, and you lose, you're back to level 10. So, like, it just it just goes by the save file before. So, this game, even though it has a hard mode, honestly, is not very hard at all. And this is one of the reasons why I haven't been making too much content for it, because it's, like, it's, it's not even, like, a challenge at this point, and it doesn't really keep my interest. Like, if it was harder, it would... And if there was, like, more... Like, I think the tactical depth for the game is fine. It's just that it needs, like, a proper difficulty setting. Because right now, the hard mode is too easy. And I'm doing, like, challenge playthroughs on Maddening where I'm, like, limiting things. Like, no extra battles, for example. And, like, you know, no use of Monastery and all this other stuff. And I'm still beating it. So, like, this game's baseline difficulty is just, like, way too easy. And I would have to do, like, a bunch of self-imposed difficulty... Enhancers, I guess we'll call them, or difficulty conditions to make it harder. Uh, but this game was like made for like units to be able to die because it's kind of like chess in that way. But um, unlike chess, I mean, like with chess, the your opponent's skill is what determines the difficulty. So if your opponent's bad and they make a lot of mistakes, you can win easily. Uh, but the opposite is also true. If you're a little bit worse than your opponent, you'll make some mistakes that you're not aware of. They'll capitalize on it and you'll lose. Um, so, I think chess is kind of like a bad example for like what a single player game should be because it's like too rigidly balanced and it can, it can get kind of repetitive because um, like you play the same openings and there's like this like you know everyone tries to do certain types of traps and all this other stuff. Uh, but yeah, so that so that, that's that's my opinion on this. I mean, you can argue that this game's harder, but it's like f three houses maddening has. Permadeath, Lord can't die, main player can't die, half XP gain, dramatically increased enemy spawns, enemies are extremely high leveled, 
enemies gain new abilities. There are pop-up spawns that attack on the same turn that happen after you wait or after, like, a, like let's say you're on turn 5 and there's, like, turn 5 reinforcements. If you're within range of those turn 5 reinforcements, you're going to get killed. And there are some maps where, like, if you slow push, like, uh, the enemy army, the reinforcements are, like, high movement units that come in behind you and they will kill your healers and mages. And, like, in the same turn. It's hilarious. But that's, that's Fire Emblem. This game... I found one pop-up spawn in one of the main quests, and it was just kind of like they were far away, and there was like there were it was like in ones and twos, and they weren't like particularly difficult enemies. So it's just like all right, like I just dealt with them; it wasn't hard at all. Um, but as long as there's no condition that says like Roland can't die, for example, um, but your main guy can, like no, there's no permadeath. So. No, I don't, and I'm not saying this game needs permadeath to be hard. I would say to, to for this game to improve its difficulty, this is what I would like to see from it. Um, limit mock battles. Maybe reduce XP gain. Um, maybe increase enemy stats or make the AI better. Um, what else? No XP gain on loss. That's huge. Make it so that, like... Your main guy can never die, so he always have to, you always have to be kind of safe with him. You can't just be reckless. Um, I mean, this this would be a start, but like when a game is designed, you have to keep this in mind too. Like I'm I'm an indie dev that shipped like a few indie games, and like when a game is designed, it's really hard to just inject like a new feature into it. So like this game was probably designed for like your average video game player, which isn't, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm not saying you have to play on the hardest setting or there's something bad if it's not extremely hard. Um, but this is like, we're talking about options. So like if you want like a chill experience, you just want to experience the story, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if anything, you're probably better off doing that because then you're spending less time grinding and, and like learning strategies and then you're spending more time in real life. So if anything, being like a casual game player is probably the best for your life. Uh, but in my case, I like to like dive in and do like difficult things, and I know there's other players like me, but we're kind of in the minority. Uh, we're probably like 10% of the gaming population, maybe 20, because uh, a lot of people like Dark Souls. That's a hard game, but I, I would say that's not every gamer that likes Dark Souls. Uh, but this game, this game was clearly not designed to be a challenging and tough game, and Fire Emblem kind of has that aspect to it where it's like always at least kind of hard. And the permadeath thing is always there. So, like, when they shipped Fire Emblem Three Houses and, like maddening, or like, maddening wasn't in it and hard mode was the only option and everyone found it too easy, everyone was, like, up in arms, like, what the hell, dude? And then they're like, oh, okay, you want a hard difficulty setting? And then they're like, all right, uh, enemy reinforcements attack you as soon as they come in. Uh, half XP, new enemies, like, more enemy spawns, new enemy abilities. And they just, like, uh, went overboard, but then everyone found out how to break it anyways because Three Houses has, like, too many things that you can exploit. Uh, but it's still a good game. But it's really hard to change a game's core design around some new concept. So, like, if you wanted to make this game harder, it'd be very hard to just, like, flip a switch and just be like, oh, here's some easy things you can change to make it harder without it feeling just, like, lazy or artificial or quick or rushed. So, like, Dark Souls is hard because you have to... It's a simple game that you have to do the right thing at the right time. So there's, like, two two main things about Dark Souls. There's positioning and there's timing. There's not necessarily aiming because of the lock-on system, and I mean, I guess you could kind of argue there's aiming to some degree, but it's not like you're playing like Team Fortress or CSGO where the aiming is like most of the skill. I would say most of the skill in Dark Souls is timing and positioning. You need to be in the right place, and you need to attack at the right time, you need to dodge at the right time, you need to parry at the right time, like you need to, to like do these basic things and be in a good position and be you know time your stuff correctly for fire emblem it's all like min maxing and tactics so like there is no mechanical skill to fire emblem because you're just like moving dudes on a board and you have infinite time to move them so there's no like pressure to like move things rapidly it's not like you're playing like blitz chess or something where you have like a minute to to win material or checkmate your opponent um like you have as much time as you need to take you can slowly move units, and as long as you understand the strategy or even just copy and paste other people's strategies, you can beat the maps. So, like, to take a game mode like that and inject skill into it would be very awkward. So, like, I mean, you could do it, but you'd have to, it'd have, you'd have to do something where it's, like, you have to 
execute attacks at a certain time, and then they have higher damage and accuracy, like in the game Gladius, if you've ever played that. Um, that was a good example of a strategy game with some skill. Uh, but to make this game harder, or to add like a maddening type mode on this game, uh, they would have to do a lot of playtesting. Like, a lot of playtesting. They'd have to, like, s s like you know, uh, seriously consider what to change about the game to uh, accommodate for the new difficulty. Because maddening mode, uh, a lot of people joke that certain maps weren't tested very much because it, it, it truly feels like they weren't. But, if like, obviously, you can abuse certain things to become extremely high level anyways. So this game would probably have a similar... Uh, issue where there's enough things to min max that if the their new difficulty like let's call it very hard or hardcore or something like let's say they make hardcore mode if like it wasn't perfectly balanced and some maps were like really ridiculous there'd still be strategies online people would figure out because there's enough tools in the game that you should be able to overcome ridiculous things uh but it um, what i'm trying to say is it wouldn't be easy just to add a big difficulty to this and i'm not sure that there are plans to do that uh, as far as I know, the game's a hit and everyone loves it, so, you know, if I was a developer and I shipped the game and everyone loved it, I'd probably be thinking about the next game and maybe just, like, patches to this game if there's any issues people run into, more so than big content update. Um, you know, I'd be thinking about Triangle Strategy too. so I can't blame them if they don't add, like, some big difficulty patch. So, it, it, it's, it's, un, it's not clear that that'll happen, but for now I'll just continue casually playing this game on hard mode. Uh, I play it to relax for like sometimes. It's just, it's it's a fun game. You know the 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 plot system is cool. I also didn't mention mention the Quintus system because I haven't used it yet. But it's like this thing where you can like inject abilities and skills in between turns or something, uh, kind of like an instant in Magic: The Gathering uh, type of thing, and it doesn't consume a turn. Um, that's kind of like Divine Pulse in a way. Uh, where you can, like, interject. In the case of Divine Pulse, you can rewind time so many times per match. Uh, in the case of this game, you can just use Quintus points to, like, perform bonuses and stuff. Like, actually, hold on, is this the Kudos dude? That's no, the one guy. Let me... Is it her? Let's go... Okay, trade post. Yeah, here you go. So you can buy Quintus points. So, so for example, you can do stuff like this. Move an ally's turn... To directly after your own. So this is a lot like the Divine Pulse, except there's like more utility. Grant the current acting unit a guaranteed crit. So these are big, big value. And you can you have you buy these points and then you can use these. And I'm assuming there's only so many Quintus points you can get, but or Quintus is it Quintus or Quintus? Quintus, whatever, Quietus, I don't know. But you get the idea. It's it's like this game's divine pulse, but except it has it has more utility. Maybe there's a quietus that can re like reverse time or something. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll find out in the future. But I, w I would say difficulty has to go to three houses maddening. It's not even close. Uh, three houses maddening as soon as you start it will mess you up if you're not prepared for it. Like the chapter one <laughs> is notorious for destroy like just stopping people from continuing because. You don't get the min-max at all before that, so you're just, like, straight up, like, level 1 and 2 against enemies that are, like, level, like, 8 and shit, and they, they can kill you very easily, and you have to use specific strategies just to deal with them. So, like, this game, the hard mode, I, I lost... I didn't even lose. I lost, like, a few units, and then I still won because we killed them all. So it's like, I was like, okay, I guess there's no consequences for things dying, so I guess I can just kind of <laughs> do whatever, as long as, as long as we have one standing we win. Whereas if you were to play Fire Emblem like that, you'd be out of units and you would just be like, you know, you'd have like two or three guys for the whole game and if they all keep dying, then you'd have like two units and that it'd be almost impossible to beat most missions on Maddening unless you did some extreme playthrough where you it, like, there, there's a playthrough where you can beat the game with one unit, but it's like really over the top and ridiculous and, and you have to abuse a lot of things to do this, but it's very hard and not easy to do and you'd have to really know what you're doing to pull it off, so it's like a high skill, high reward type of thing. Uh, but in this game, you can just be kind of like careless and reckless, and you're not punished for mistakes really. Because I mean, you, you can make the argument that getting punished really hard in video games, like single player games, is annoying. But if you enjoy the challenge, it's not. So it's really up to like your play style. And like I said earlier, it doesn't matter if you don't want a hard game or if you just want to play an easy game. Um, 
it's just a it's, it's an issue of preference. Most people can beat hard games if they put the time in. So I think that's a common misconception that like oh you either have the skill or you don't. It's usually a function of time, assuming you have like at least average intellect, which most people do. So most people can beat most hard games. So so yeah, that's my uh, three houses maddening versus. Uh, triangle strategy hard mode. It's it's extremely obvious to me that three houses is significantly harder in almost every aspect, it, ranging from the raw increase in difficulty from the settings, the difference in the settings, uh, the way, like the power of the enemies versus you, the amount of increased spawns, the new abilities enemies have. Um, they like for example, they added these archers. Uh, they up they upgraded the enemy archers to have this thing that is if you, if they hit you you automatically take twenty percent extra damage or not twenty percent you take twenty percent of your max health as extra damage and there's a ton of these things everywhere and they can hit you from like three range so that's just an example there's like a bunch of new enemies enemies can pass through your formations so you think your your backline guys are safe they can just walk right through your wall of uh, units and then just like assassinate a healer <laughs> so like yeah it's nuts but. It's, it's obvious to me that Three Houses definitely is the harder game. And then you have the economy differences, the XP gain differences, the, the you can infinite grind this game, you can't do that on Three Houses. Um, both games are good games. I'm not saying Triangle Strategy is a bad game. Um, it's, it's more casual, and that's fine. Not every game needs to be hardcore. Not every game needs to be Dark Souls. <laughs> so it's like, it's totally fine. Uh, but it, I, would, I would prefer if they added some better difficulty settings. Like, maybe like... If not permadeath, maybe just like no XP gain, no XP retention on loss. Uh, that would be a good setting to add. And then maybe a hardcore setting to make the game even harder. Maybe add a few like a few enemy units more. Maybe make them a little bit higher leveled. Uh, to put pressure on the player to um, min-max and find optimal strategies. Because that's what you want from a tactical game for a hard setting. But yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks for checking this out. I'll be making some more triangle strategy videos. I don't know if I'm going to be doing tutorials for them. Or for this game because it's like I don't know like I, I like tutorials for games that are hard I mean I guess I made Bioshock tutorials that's not particularly a hard game but uh, I like shooting things in the head with crossbows in video games so that was enjoyable to do uh, but yeah thanks for checking this out maybe I make tutorials for this game maybe I don't we'll find out and peace